Now we have seen that the fundamental theorem of calculus gives us a basic tool to calculate definite integrals. The idea is that to calculate a definite integral, all we need is to find an antiderivative of the function we integrate, in other words, an indefinite integral, and then evaluate that antiderivative at the bounds of integration. We have seen rules to find antiderivatives or indefinite integrals in some cases, but there are functions that we don't know how to integrate, in other words, for which we don't know how to find an antiderivative. For instance, let's look at the um, antiderivative of 2x multiplied by square root of 1 plus x squared. There is not much we can do with the formulas that we have seen so far to find antiderivatives. Basically, what we know so far is how to integrate a trig function or a linear combination of powers of the variable. So this, is, this doesn't fall in one of these categories. However, you see that this 1 plus x square here that is inside the square root, uh, we have this 2x outside, which is the derivative of 1 plus x square. So it looks like something of that sort. We have the derivative of a function f, and then this function f plugged into another. So that's f prime multiplied by g of f of x. So this f of x here, in our case, is 1 plus x squared. And therefore, f prime is just 2x. The function g here is just the square root of x. And now we are looking for the interval of f prime multiplied by g of f of x. That should remind you of something that we have seen before. A composite multiplied by the derivative of the function inside. We've seen something like that when we looked at the derivative of a composite function, namely the chain rule. If you differentiate the composite g of f, then you get the derivative of g evaluated at f, and then you have to multiply by f prime. This chain rule can be turned around because what this formula says is that an antiderivative of g prime of f of x multiplied by f prime of x is a function g of f. Right? We can reformulate this in terms of indefinite integral that way. Right? A function whose derivative is g prime evaluated at f of x multiplied by f prime is a composite g of f. So now, we're going to try to match our integral with this new formula, that the integral of g prime of f times f prime is g of f. So our f of x that we plug inside the square root is 1 plus x square. And now we want to interpret the square root function as g prime of x. So we want to obtain g of f of x to obtain our um, antiderivative of the function. And we already know what f of x is, so we need to find g. g prime here is square root of x, so to obtain g we simply integrate g prime. That's an antiderivative of x to the 1 half. We can use the power rule. We get x to the 3 half over 3 half, which is 2 thirds x to the 3 half up to a constant. That means that g of f of x is simply plugging f of x equal 1 plus x squared into the function 2 thirds of x plus 3 half up to a constant. So we obtain our antiderivative of the function root of 1 plus x squared times 2x. Now you see that this is a little bit cumbersome to do all this matching exercise, uh, introducing the functions and so on. So, so now we're going to rework the same example, but with Different, a different method. It's not really a different method, but rather different notations that are a little less cumbersome than what we have seen before. The method is called substitution. In other words, we're going to rewrite an integral that looks complicated in a form that is simpler to integrate, and to do that we're going to introduce a new variable. This new variable is the variable that we're going to substitute for something else, hence the name substitution. This is going to work when we have a composite, like this g prime of f of x that we've seen before. In our case, here is a composite part. We plug the function 1 plus x squared into the square root function. 
the new variable is always going to be this function that we plug into another what's inside the composite part in other words we're going to take for our new variable u 1 plus x squared then we calculate du well what that is is really the derivative of u with respect to x multiplied by dx so du is in that case 2x dx again to obtain this, you calculate du over dx, the derivative, that's 2x, and you write it formally as du equal 2x dx by multiplying both sides by dx, which is, of course, a purely formal transformation, um, but this is what we do with differentials. And now you see that this 2x dx that we have in blue in the integral is exactly this 2x dx that is equal to du. So what's in red is going to be square root of u, and what's in blue is going to be du. So we can substitute for each part in the integral, and we obtain that the integral of 2x square root of 1 plus x squared dx is square root of u du, because again I replace the 2x dx by du, and the root of 1 plus x squared by root of u. And now we have an integral of the variable u, that is easier to integrate because um, it's simply u to the one half so we can use the power rule and we get two thirds u to the three half up to a constant but what we want is an antiderivative of the function 2x root of 1 plus x squared as a function of x so we substitute back the value of u in terms of x and we obtain two thirds 1 plus x squared to the three half up to a constant, which is what we found before with this matching exercise. Now in general, we need some basic assumption for this method to work. So if you want to integrate something of the form g of f of x times f prime, you name a new variable u for f of x, then du is f prime of x dx, and you obtain a new integral that is of the form g of u du, and that is hopefully easier to handle. The basic assumptions we need is for the function f of x to be differentiable, to have a range that is an interval, and such that the function g is at least continuous on that interval, on the range of the function f. So let's look at another example here. Let's say we want to integrate x cubed cosine of x to the fourth plus 2. We look at the composite part, this g of f of x, in that case cosine of x to the fourth plus 2, and we take the inside part f of x, so that's x to the fourth plus 2, that's my u. So u is going to be x to the fourth plus 2. Then what we do is calculate du, that's going to be the derivative of x to the fourth plus 2, that's 4x cubed, multiplied by dx. What we have in the integral is not quite 4x cubed dx, it's only x cubed dx. So we solve for that in terms of du. x cubed dx is one fourth of du. So now I'm going to replace this x cubed dx in the integral by 1 fourth of du and cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 by cosine of u. I obtain the integral of cosine of u times 1 fourth of du and of course the constant 1 fourth can be pulled out of the integral and I obtain 1 fourth integral of cosine u du. So now all I need is an antiderivative of cosine with respect to u and an antiderivative of cosine is sine so I obtain one fourth of sine of u up to a constant. Again, what I originally wanted is an antiderivative of the function x cubed cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 as a function of x. So I substitute back the value of u in terms of x and I obtain one fourth sine of x to the fourth plus 2 up to a constant. 